Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's not our normal Monday. Instead, it is Thursday, and that's in part because none of us read the book on time. Taylor and Gretchen have a better excuse than I do because they were actually doing things last weekend. I just didn't we were at an read. academic conference. Not we were actually, not actually being friends in a informal setting, as Michaela implied. Oh. We had to be together. Oh. You know, we don't ever actually want to be together. Why would you want that? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, but we are here, and we will be hopefully doing the next one on time if everybody can read the book by Monday. It's uh, a short we'll one. See. Yeah, we'll see. I have to find um, <laughs> You might want to do that. Anyway, this week we read Invisible Thought Lines by Kristen Page Madonia. It's this book. It looks like this. I have a library copy, so it's super shiny. Um, I have a signed copy. Sign copy. Uh, Michaela, before, you we met go, her. before we go on, I hmm? think your audio is coming out of your computer because we are both getting feedback from your end. But it isn't. Like, well, literally, it isn't. I can hear me. I don't... <laughs> yeah, we had this discussion earlier. She can't fix it. Okay, I'll ignore it. Because the other the other mic makes me sound like a rubit. Okay, well, hopefully... Hopefully our guests will not be troubled. She doesn't have feedback, and hers is the feed that matters, so... Oh, in that case, just keep moving. I'm sorry I said anything. Rude. Um, yeah, I'm going to try. Eh. So we read this. This is a book club. I am slightly lackluster, I realize right now. I'm usually more peppy. I have been ill for the past two days, so I am not feeling well. So apologies if this is not super great for everybody to watch, uh, but we want to do this. It, oh, okay. I'll just go to bed then, and you two can do whatever. <laughs> Don't leave me with him. Um, I'll just smile the whole time. Keep going. Okay. Um, if you didn't know, this is a book club. So we are going to be talking about the characters and events of the novel, but we always start with spoiler-free stuff first. Uh, if you haven't read the book, I will read the inside flap for you now. Um, it starts with... My father disappeared on a Tuesday that should have been any Tuesday, but eventually became the Tuesday my father disappeared. Tired of living in limbo, Callie finally decides to investigate her father's disappearance for herself. Maybe there was an accident at the construction site that he oversaw. Maybe he doesn't remember who he is and is lost somewhere. Or maybe he just traveled back in time to the great San Francisco earthquake of 1906. Kristen Page Madonia, author of Fingerprints of You, explores how to rebuild a life after everything seems lost. And now we... I'm gonna start with our overall impressions. Ah, uh, hello everyone. I'm Gretchen. If you don't know my face, although you should, because it shows up on this YouTube channel a lot. Um, and this was my pick because I actually, along with Taylor, met Kristen Page Madonia back in April when she was at our school for a literary festival, um, which is how I have a signed copy. And um. Um, it, it was okay. It was not terribly exciting, um, or anything. Um, there was really kind of a non-plot, uh, especially if you are thinking, oh, it's a YA novel, and it will have, like, exciting, blah, blah, and there's time travel. No. No. Um, I, it was beautiful, it's, like, there's good writing, um, uh, but other than that, it was very fast read. I gave it three stars, because it's not great, but it's not terrible, so there we are. Um, for me, hi, I'm Michaela, if you didn't know, again, my face shows up on here. At least it used to show up here pretty often, but as of late, I've been not doing much. I'm in a bit of a slump right now. And then I read this, and it didn't help any. I gave this one two stars. 
to be fair, I read most of it while off and on throwing up, so I might be biased <laughs> in some way. Um, but my problem here is that I actually, when I read YA, I read YA contemporary, and I read YA contemporary with magical realism elements, and this is a really bad example of that. If I was going to say, here is a YA book I really love, it would never, ever be this. And if somebody came up to me holding this and said, hey, would you read it? I would probably go, no, there's other things you can read. Uh, so I was not the biggest fan of it. And if you don't want to read it, I'd say don't do it. Because, <laughs> mm, didn't like, did not like. Hi, I'm Taylor. I am drinking oolong tea, if you care. <laughs> I am also drinking it out of a mug with a bunch of rabbits getting frisky, so how about that? Um, that was me stalling for time because I'm trying to think of... So my, my opinions on this book were fairly neutral, I suppose. I think I might have liked it more if I hadn't read it right on the heels of Bone Gap. Uh, because both are um, roughly YA novels about characters dealing with someone who has gone missing for no discernible reason. And so, in some ways, both of them having a very slow burn of, of a story arc, just people kind of having feelings and memories. Um, it, it didn't help that this one had the same general idea, even despite actual content differences. Um, I also think I would have liked this a lot more with, like, one, like, just change to the time travel, time travel thing. Not even that it was or wasn't there, just we'll get into that later. Very well written, as Gretchen said. I, I really enjoyed the writing uh, when it got to things that were happening that I was interested in. The last 50 pages were very good. <laughs> yeah, moving on. Those are opinions. Yeah, that's it. All right, okay. Uh, if you do want to read the book and you don't want to be spoiled now, it'd be the time to flee into the night and return once you've read it. Uh, if you don't care about being spoiled or if you have already read the book, Welcome in. Uh, we are going to be talking about it and about our thoughts on things. And, yep, that's how book clubs work, right? Right, guys? That's how we do it. Yeah. Right. That's how you get excited, Michaela. Good job. I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying, guys. Um, where do we want to start with this? Because we've sort of been off and on talking about very different things all over the place, and I'm not sure where a good place to start is. I would say let's start with our favorite parts, but I honestly cannot give you one. Cannot. I thought the last 50 pages were very solid. I stand by that answer. I felt... Mm, mm, okay, mm. well, I am going to say that just, like, as a reader of YA, that I was really terrified that... And this is a mega spoiler if you're still here, so, like, back away. Back away fast. Um, that her dad did not come back in the end. Because I just kept waiting for, like, usually there's, like, you know, she because she does see that picture of him, and she's, like, she knows mm -hmm. where he's gone. And I was, like, oh, and you know all the science because of Isaac, who just randomly appears. And they um, both have the glass shard, and it's going to... Yeah. So I was just, like, oh, God, he's going to come back and whatever. But then he didn't come back. And I really respect that decision a lot. Like, mm -hmm. I think that it would have been very easy to undo that, and it didn't. And um, I was really, really pleased with that. I Are you saying that the traditional YA route would have been to have the father come back, and because she didn't, that was a pro? Yes. Yeah. I'm Do not sure to... I agree with that mm -hmm. entirely. Do you just want to right now dig immediately into the meat of the time travel arc? Like, can we just get that right down to the quick? Yeah. Sure. Because, Michaela, do you want to respond to that and we can work out whether it's a good or a bad thing before moving on? Because um, I don't have enough... I'm willing to hear yours and see you two fight for a change. Well, I mean, you're the one that brought it up. 
So, like... No, no, Gretchen, what you said, I mean. Oh. I was just going to say that I have read a handful of contemporary YA books that have a time travel element. Um, namely, my favorite YA book, which is Everybody Sees the Ants by A.S. King. Um, there's the main character in that, the magical realism element, is that he goes back in time and like powwows with his grandfather in Vietnam, who disappeared in Vietnam. Um, and, like, gets fatherly advice from his grandfather, basically, in his dreams. Mm -hmm. And part of... he The grandfather doesn't come back. Like, he doesn't get found in that right. one. And I felt m more like that was okay in that book than in this book. Like, I didn't feel like she had any sort of emotional completion, despite that fact, like... Well, powwowing like, with I'm... your grandfather doesn't disrupt the timeline, whereas this does. I also feel like there's an element to this, too, where it's, like, connected to the larger discussion of the time travel element, because I... I genuinely don't... I... It didn't need to be there. It's like this added part of the book that you could subtract and basically just say that her father disappeared and you don't know where to. And, and like, you could have the book. So I'm just saying that, like, and especially because... No, I would agree with you. I, I was going to say that she either didn't go far enough with it or went slightly too far and should have left it vaguer. Let me pose a, a hypothetical. Because this is what I was thinking of when Gretchen mentioned the other day like that she felt the time travel was irrelevant. What if this book was exactly the same, including her seeing her dad in the picture and being convinced that he was, you know, back in time. But instead of the chapters of him, we had a, a story from that time that came from her research of it. So, like, some people's story about reuniting with someone they thought was lost, someone uh, that didn't happen, or just these first-person stories, or even not. But just, she sees her dad, and we have no idea ever. And we're like, well, maybe she's just completely insane and latching on to something. Do we think that would have been more satisfying? Yes. Yes. Do we think that would have made this a much stronger book to the point where we wouldn't have really have had an issue with the pacing? Or do we I think these also, are separate? I would also have been fine with leaving in the sections with her dad if it was justified as her dreaming about what was happening to him. It right? Like, she's making up this storyline if he gets thrown back into the past and this is her way of coping with it. I mean, she does have her line of, like, well, if he was back in time, I bet he would be trying to help people. And Which the whole thing is, like... I didn't believe at all. Especially no, that that's... he wouldn't be helping people, but, like, she, it, it had no... I didn't feel like she had emotional resolve. Like, how did you come to that? Where did that come from? Especially because he said to her that if he didn't work as an archaeologist digging the ground, he would have been an astronomer. Well, and also, like, when you put time travel into a novel, you can, like, use it for very distinct emotional purposes. So, like, he gets there, he doesn't remember who he is. So, like, I think it's the last section of his that he, like, pangs over this girl child, but he doesn't know why. And I'm like, you, you literally, okay, all right. Like, where was the, like, he could have had that in the beginning if he had remembered. There would have been something very powerful about him trying to find his way back somehow, but, like, having all this destruction around him and feeling like he had to help or something. Like, I would have taken that, but, like, this was literally just, like, what am I doing? Why am I here? Where have I come from? I, it was just, I agree with you. I agree with you. That's also, what I mean by it. she should have gone farther, though. Like, if she had spent more time with him. Because he didn't even get full chapters. He was, like, a handful of paragraphs at the beginning of chapters for the most we, part. Combined, there was probably under 15 pages in this 310-page book. So, like, 
either take those bits out or do more with that. But it's she. It's like she didn't want to go into what the father would be going through. Really, it was just like, "Yep, he totally time traveled. That's what happened." Mm-hmm. If you're gonna go time travel, you have to go time travel. You can't like or like I I agree. I would go. I would take. I would have taken either over what we got, which was like either. We don't know that he's time traveled, and it's like this emotional like, is it her? Like, what's happening? Or this like, the other way where you really use time travel for the things that it's good for, and creating an emotional response kind of thing. No, I agree with that entirely. And that's one of the reasons why I really felt that this book wasn't as good as Bone Gap or as many other contemporary YA books because. I don't think any single character had a genuine character arc that I felt was justified in what I was listening to them say. It was like a Mm -hmm. whole lot of flatlining for me, and while this is trying to be a coming-of-age story where she's trying to figure out what she's going to do, and everything got messed up because her father disappeared and she's thrown through a loop, like, I didn't... It was a book of stagnation. And okay, because see, this is the thing that's so funny, because that is exactly how I feel about Bone Gap. Bone Gap was literally painful to read. It felt like I was dragging myself through the book over ice picks. Whereas at least this, I sat down and I finished it in one sitting, and I was like, well, that wasn't painful. So I just think that's so funny. <laughs> it was so I mean, painful. Fight, fight, fight. <laughs> <laughs> Not me for a change. Not me for a change. <laughs> you want to know why I think that? Um, there, why I think I liked Bone Gap more than this? Go for it. Male protagonist. <sighs> I, I don't have an opinion here. <laughs> she killed her. Do you want to know why? Because I am so tired of YA books with girls trying to be different and girls just having everything knock them down, but they're just going to keep doing what they want to do. Whereas Bone Gap is about a boy who loves the person but isn't in love with her, who's having struggles of his own, and he's working through them, and we see him working through them and making genuine relationships with other people, whereas with her it was like, oh, she found a hot dude and sort of fell in love with him. And I'm like so tired of that, but I'm okay with a story of a young boy falling in love with a girl because it seemed more genuine in there than this did. I don't know, Michaela. It is the year of the Beyonce. <laughs> what? The... the... <laughs> Girl and empowerment. Look, I haven't listened to the new album. I don't know. It, was it like, didn't. Oh. It didn't feel like empowerment, though. Yeah, no, I know. Because her figuring out her own shit. It was literally her relying on guys to push her around and make her do stuff and care. And I didn't ever actually feel like she did. I just really love the fact that so when Taylor and I were discussing this book, when we got to Catherine's house right before Ohio. We were walking around, and Taylor goes, I just really like that there's been no romance so far. And there's, like, the gay guy that she's friends with and these two dudes, and there's, like, no romance. And we were like, huzzah! And then I hit Isaac, and I was like, oh, no. Oh, no. I didn't even have an issue with him at first, because, you know, he came, and I'm like, well, okay, this seems natural. Then we got a bit... The, The date was where it lost me. That that's when it, he just started to feel very, um, you know, here are character points. Okay, no, where it got me was the first time he shows up, because they're like talking about how he's this great enigma and he's really rich and they're his they're the first gig and then like they just randomly meet at a club and she spills everything she hasn't told anyone else and I'm like, ow, it's so uh, many. So I was cliche. I, I <laughs> could just move yeah. past that. I mean, my it was also that my uh, issue with this book more than the time travel was just every scene in the book 
seem to simply exist as a trigger for some memory or opinion about her dad. In, in the way that I understand that in the wake of this, everything or most things would be a trigger for these emotions, but it still seemed like all of these things are being set up to have some convenient of, well, this is what my dad did. Kit, would we have felt this book was better if she had more of a less of, of a, like, super in love with her dad, and her dad is this all-powerful, like, super nice dude sort of feelings most of the time? Because, like, that's the other thing that bothered me, is that she was always like, my dad's the greatest. Ugh. I wanted it yeah, a little gone. more on that the back sucks. burner. I wanted it always present, but not necessarily always stated, and it was always stated. Yeah, it was a... Yeah. I mean, I, I also do fair. feel that, like, sometimes, especially since she's actually she's so close to her dad, mm-hmm. that, like, mm-hmm. I honestly felt that sometimes that she, especially since he's gone, like, when people are gone, you start completely dropping anything bad they've ever done and just yeah. really romanticizing the good part. So that really didn't bother me that much. Oh, I would be fine with romanticizing the good part if he wasn't actually, like, a Mary Sue. Like, if he had actually just ditched his family and, like, we found out at the end that he was somewhere else and, and just being a dick, I would have been like, yeah, okay. Now I can sort of believe this plot line. But because he actually did travel through time and is just an amnesiac in the past, I'm like, no, you can't be a perfect human being. You are not allowed. That doesn't exist in real life. That's why he was sent back in time, Terminator style. (laughs) They were like, you are too good. You cannot live right now. I also haven't seen Terminator, so this is the second joke in a very short amount of time that I'm really not sure about. (laughs) <laughs> I'm pretty sure Terminators travel through time that was the way the last Terminator but I don't know was. why I think it stops does it stop Skynet they, I just, they, I keep, just you know, they keep sending Terminators back to kill the dude who's gonna make Terminators and I'm like that's not okay yeah. the Terminators that's are not stopping their initiation mm-hmm. wow Terminator sucks <laughs> It's because the future, the Terminators are evil, so, like, a small group of rebels and, like, the early generations of Terminators are being sent back in time to try and stop the early generations from Terminators being created because they'll turn into evil future Terminators. Okay, one question. Mm -hmm. Where do the earthquakes come in? (laughs) It takes place in California, so there have to be earthquakes. Okay. Just, I guess. <laughs> I'm super not happy with this book. <laughs> All right, so here here's something I want to talk about because um, genre is apparently my thing, and that is that like, what makes this besides the age of the main character, which definitely yes is like YA ish. What, because like this in terms of YA and like why I like to read YA is not YA. Well, okay. I, in my review of this on Goodreads, said that this was more of a YA book than a lot of YA books I read because I felt like people who were in high school might read this and get something out of it, but people my age, or at least like me, don't want anything from this, because this is a story about a young girl who's trying to figure out what she's going to be doing before she goes to school, and in order to do that, she has to come to terms with this tragic event. And, like, I don't need that storyline. I don't care. I've lived that part of my life. If, like... I'm fine with reading books about people who are teenagers doing things. I'm less fine with reading stories that are about teenagers and their problems because I lived that and I think it's kind of vapid and unnecessary. Because teenagers are vapid and unnecessary. Really, they should be eradicated from the earth. As temporary a solution as that would be, I'm still inclined to agree with you. But do you see what I'm saying, though, Gretchen? Yeah, <laughs> like no, no, I get it. I get it. 
And, like, even though Bone Gap was also a coming-of-age story, I felt like it was much more focused on other things than that part, whereas this was very much focused on how she was going to move forward from this, if that makes sense. And I didn't like the way it was done. That is completely valid, and I, I agree with that, actually, uh, quite a bit, not obviously all the way. Because um, <laughs> I feel like this is a book that wanted to be a literary novel, and then was like, no, I'm going to be spec fic YA. And I'm like, the shoe don't fit. The shoe don't fit. <laughs> I, uh, but it wasn't even good literary fiction because I like literary fiction. No, but I'm just mean like if you start like if you kicking some of the more really YA elements like out and like start focusing like specifically on the family dynamic like you know fingerprints of you is a lot about like family dynamics and stuff like that. Like, start focusing on what happens between her and her mom. Like, start focusing on... If, if you let it be without the specific element. And, like, on her inability to handle this. Like, I've read better versions of that in YA as well. Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe is a story about self-discovery and coming to terms with something. And That's hate. a pretty good book. Yeah. And that that is all about relationships. There is no speculative element at all in that book. It's just about two kids being bros. So <laughs> Don't look at me to fill this silence. I have no horse in this race. I Okay, then fine. Better literary YA could have been. Could have been. Was not. <laughs> it was like, again, like all where of the is the line also between like genre it tried to be? I don't know. I just thought that there was so much potential that went unrealized. For folk and and the that unrealized potential came at the expense of focusing on why yeah 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 yeah. Still okay. Okay, except for Ed. I don't think that it would even even if it was if you took out all of the YA elements, I don't think it would be a good story. Well, we'll because again, to disagree. <sighs> That's fine. We can agree to disagree. If we're talking about this being all about feelings, and since literary fiction is almost exclusively people feeling feelings, Th there are feelings. really hard. Are feelings. People feeling feelings really hard. I didn't feel that those characters felt anything. It all felt like they were robots, and they were doing what Kristen Page told them to do. Nobody felt like a real person. I mean, I guess that it's fair. I just, like, I'm loving this so much because these things that you're saying about this book are how I feel about every single goddamn literary fiction book we ever have read for Book Club in four seasons. So at this point, I'm just like, meh. That's, I have to, I've had, I've had to learn to ignore that. How many? I don't even know how many literary fiction books we've read. We've read a few. Well, that, like, plus, like, college English major. Literary, every time I read literary fiction, I feel like the characters, like, feel nothing. Which is why I got so upset about Castle Wish Girl's work, because I, I got to the end of the novel, up. and I was like, ha, ah, they felt nothing, and then I closed the book, and I was like, I feel so many things! <laughs> I so didn't I have like, that I'm, class, I'm, so... Yeah, I was I un I'm just, like, unused to characters what? doing anything. <laughs> Michaela, have you not read Never Let Me Go? I have not read any Ishiguro. Oh, you would like Never Let Me Go. I have it 
They feel feelings. Wait, that's not true because we did the Great Giant. Okay, then I've read that one, and I had issues with that one as well. That was not his best work. But anyways, that's just my <laughs> point. It's the, just like everything you are saying just makes me laugh hysterically. Because <laughs> I'm like, finally the shoe! The shoe is on the other foot! But like... I like so many things, so the fact that I dislike this has to say something. No, it doesn't. That's in fact that all that we're showing is this does indeed come down to personal taste. So what we can oh, draw. Oh yeah, it like, does. Well, we we have issues with these parts, but like. I don't have my copy of Bone Gap. I lent don't, it to. Don't Bunga. point it at my face like that. I'm I'm literally saying I, I cannot put my finger on why exactly I hated this one when I liked Bone Gap so much because both of them are almost exactly the same book. Literally almost exactly the same book. And I hated this one so much. And I, I didn't feel like anything in here was worth anything. There was no plot. Nothing happened. No characters felt anything. And that's one of the things... Even if in <laughs> literary fiction often characters are apathetic, at least they acknowledge they're apathetic and they're not posing as feelings. If that makes sense. Like, okay, I also just want to revisit the fact that you just said the fact that you like so many things and didn't like this means something because the reverse of that is that I don't like a lot of things and the fact that I like this doesn't mean anything. That, no, that's not what I meant. But you didn't like it either. I liked it more than you did. <laughs> I think I might be the person with the most positive feelings about this book. I mean, you also haven't said anything. So, like, I really liked this book, but I've just been getting in arguments about it because I can. And that's the point of this. You actually have to get in on this. Mm. Like, and I would like to stop talking now. I'm too ill to think rationally. So, Taylor, you, you got to get in on this. You also brought up the time travel thing to begin with, and then just, like, like let us go at No, no, I, had, I said my bit. You didn't? Okay, well. Okay, well. Yeah, I think we have actually covered... Um, Basically everything, kind of quickly. No, we actually need to bring up the kind of the thing that Michaela wanted to bring up. And I will bring it up for her because she doesn't want to speak. Okay. Um, and that is the line about Andrew in the front. About... Do you want to take that one? I think you can do it better than I can. Well, I just think it goes back to see how relationships are portrayed in this book, though. Okay. I'm interested. Go on. Um... So, I, now I don't have the quote. Oh, so it's like... After it's on like 40, 47. Page 47, I think. I'm going to be pepping the very, Taylor right now. Very bottom. <laughs> I'm going to go. Okay. I'll be back in a second. Okay. Okay. Well. At so least it's, she's quarantined. <laughs> that's true. Um, so it's, I watched this Ryan and Andrew, and this is a friend and her ex-boyfriend, Andrew. And the girls from the soccer team drifted into the crowd, moving between bodies and graduation gowns, and parents taking photos. He's not a jackass, I said to Beckett. He's just a normal boy, I guess. That's all. And this is after it's been revealed that Andrew cheated on her. Um, and, but she's just seen him with a new girlfriend. And he should, now she's just like, oh, he's just a normal guy. That that seems like something, you know, a grumpy teenager would say, trying to seem like they don't care. But, you know. But putting it in a book for young adults? Like, that's a problem. Okay, go on, just... Give me sentences, Gretchen. I'm trying to get you in on this conversation. You've just been staring. Yeah. You know, I'm listening. Um, 
you can't tell young adults that that behavior is normal. Mm -hmm. And then also have her say something like that and never bring it up again. Because that needs to be addressed. Drift out of this narrative very quickly. I was expecting some sort of confrontation, but she but got over it. You expect that after Jay cheats on Beckett, too, though. Ooh. And I mean, yes, she yeah. does leave time after that because she gets hit with a car. But, like... You, you think Jason would have stopped making out with the guy in public upon being discovered the first time and getting away with it? You'd think. You'd think. Especially at the coffee shop where Beckett has visited him unannounced before. Yeah. Well, like, then again, Jay was never really played off as a bright character. I mean, that's fair. I just like think that it was really not great. That, that seemed like a very convenient way to tie up the resolution between the two of them without needing to just like, like add more to the book. I mean, I agree. I just like having two different situations of cheating and then mm -hmm. never addressing the fact that like it's bad and just kind of leaving it well, as a thing I, that happens. I think that was clear that it was bad. But like with her line though, she's like, oh, he's just a normal boy. Like, oh, this is just normal behavior. Like. Oh, okay. Okay, Gretchen. Gretchen, level with me here. Are we going to disagree with that? Wait, disagree with what? That that is a normal boy. Yes. Okay, cool. Wow. You have more faith than I do. Well, because it doesn't say good things to girls, and it doesn't say good no. things to boys. No, it doesn't. So, like, you're just, like, it's a double whammy there. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, a lot of these things in the book, I'm like, well, a couple of these could have made it so much stronger, and then other things, I just don't really have that um, energy, like with the J arc, to really get worked up about it one way or the other. You're just like, just like, hey, it happened. I yeah. have it now. I, I guess in some ways it's just something like, you, you've you read those things before, those, those uh, relationship breakdowns and novels, and sometimes you just don't really go too deep in it, because you're like, okay, yeah, that's happening. This that's is... fair. I didn't expect you to get hit by a car. That was random. You know, it was kind of expected, actually. Well, in the sense that as the scene was progressing, that felt completely natural. That was in the part of the book where it really started to get together because I thought, one, it, it was very well written in her thought process of like thinking of him while creating an escalation of emotion, and then she gets hit by a car. I thought that was great. I, I thought the resolution between her and her mom was good. Um, I, th I think those worked well. And, you know, I felt... Uh, the, her fixation on her dad fit a lot more into the flow of the story. I guess that I was just, because it did happen so close to the end, that it was just like this perfect way to be like, boom, car, and now we're going to fix everything with Beckett and fix everything with her mom. And like, and that's just like... Well, it was a breaking point, like a literal breaking point. <laughs> Where she is like, it, she's like this, this thought process is very likely going to get me killed with, you know, jumping in front of cars. That's bad. It worked I mean, fair. for me. I was just like, that is the one thing that I was like, ah, of course this happens. Like, because it, it's been, you know, brought up at very, like, you know, throughout the story that, you know, she was losing weight. She's not really doing it. She's not interacting with her mom. She's just avoiding so many things that this was really like a, a satisfying and some and what I would say a satisfying wake up call of destructive behavior in a natural narrative real world sort of way 
Do you think that somebody who's depressed would become not depressed because they got hit by a car? No. <laughs> because I disagree, friend. I disagree strongly. The look on your face when you said that is precious to me. That was great. Because I have to agree with her as well. <laughs> I'm waiting for you to defend yourself and you're not. No, I'm fine. <laughs> the level of apathy. <laughs> um, I think I thought of how I wanted to rephrase the thing I said earlier, Gretchen, while I was puking. Because I'm sick. No, baby. <laughs> um, I didn't mean to... Um, remove value from your opinion, I think what I was trying to say is because this should have been a book that I liked. It, Based on how you would sell this book, it has everything that I like in a YA novel, and I didn't like it, which is a problem. Which is completely fair, because like you said, this is this is the bone gap. I, I was going to say Mach 2, but that would imply improvement. And, I mean... It took away the thing that you didn't like from Bone Gap, but it took away everything that I liked from Bone Gap and then stuck in a bunch of things that I didn't like and then took out all of the feeling for me. And I was like, well, now it's not good at all. <laughs> There's nothing in here for me anymore. Which, again, is personal taste, but that's, that's what I think was what I was trying to say, was that I should have loved this. And I hated it. Maybe because I thought that I would like it, but I didn't really have any opinions on it going into it. I just opened it and read it. I think, too, that's, like, <laughs> why all of my opinions get more frustrated than they might be, too. Because, like, I wanted to like this so much. <coughs> and it had so many things that I could have liked in it if they had just been, like... Mm. Get a push. Mm. So like that adds to frustration too. When I can like pr I can see the version of this book that I would have really really liked, and then I am just like, this is the version that I have. I would agree with you there, but I don't think there was enough good to justify it as a thing. Because I know that Taylor and I have said that before, notably with our death vigil discussion, was that both Taylor and I were like, this could have been great, and here are things that were not so great, and we all discussed that. But for me, there was enough good in that to, to still be enjoyable, whereas for me, even though, like you said, I could recognize where this could be good, and I saw that it either needed to be pushed farther or taken back in certain ways, I didn't enjoy the process. And then you have Taylor, who's just like, Meh. And yet he says he's the one who liked it the most. I, I think so. It's kind of the vibe I get. Maybe Gretchen liked it more. That's okay. <laughs> You're like, I don't need to be the most in like with this book. <laughs> I just like I think that it says something like you liked the book too, but like there's nothing you want to add. Like I feel like with books that we really really like, we can find like multiple things. But like oh we like this one, we like this one, we can discuss them, and this one like I like this. That that's all the words I got. I liked the writing. I don't think this is necessarily the strongest book. Um, uh, Kristen Page Madonia could have. Uh, or probably have read. I haven't read uh, from your point of view, but I, this is something that I would read and be interested in looking at more of her work. So despite issues I may have with this, I don't think this speaks poorly of writing ability. Yeah, I don't think so. I would be fine with reading something else for <coughs> from her. I just don't think that it should be her trying to do YA. Because it, 
it's constructed wrong and lazy in a lot of ways. Yeah, that's why like I'm wishing that I I really had read Fingerprints of You now because I know that that novel was never supposed to be a YA novel, and I wonder what the difference in construction is if you think of it as something she didn't think was going to be YA and then just got marketed that way, or Invisible Fault Lines as her second book, which she knew was going to be YA, and what that difference looks like on an actual written level. Because I I agree, like I. The reason I switched my pick to this book was because when I heard her read it at New Voices, I was just in love with the way that her words sounded. And that's really what did it for me. And I, Yeah, I have no complaints about the writing style. I haven't said anything bad about that. It was very well written in that way. I just don't think that it was well constructed, if that makes sense. It might not. No, I agree with that 100%. <laughs> Are we done? <laughs> I think you need to be done. Yeah, you're starting to make me feel like I'm getting germs over the internet, so maybe we should wrap. See, I'm making myself feel bad for her, so there's two different no. people here. So yes, we can be done. I think that our apathy is only going to continue to go in circles. Yeah. Yeah. We'll be back hopefully on Monday to discuss this thing, which may be another discussion of us all being like, God, we didn't like it because tiny versions of us weren't fans, but Wait, lots of adults. Wait, three days from now Monday? Yes. Okay, yep. just wanted to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's somewhere. I'm totally prepared. <laughs> if you guys don't know, we're reading the entire His Dark Material series by Philip Pullman as part of our uh, next installation, installation, installment, there's the word, this of uh, Nostalgia Junkie. It's a trilogy. And hopefully Casey will be back for that. She's done all of our Nostalgia series with us. Yeah. This is Taylor's first Nostalgia Junkie series, so we're you sad to one? have him. Well, we did all of Pendragon. But that's yeah. still one series. I was counting 13 Days of Misfortune as sort of a nostalgia junkie. So oh, that's fair. All right, so, I mean, you missed the last one, so whatever. We're still stuck with you for this one. That was the more fun one, I feel, because yeah. there was a lot more variation in it. <laughs> and also and we didn't read 13 long. books in 13 days. There was more time in between... <laughs> Look, we got a catchy name out of it. We're sticking with the day-to-day -day book thing. <laughs> Good. In any case, we're going to be reading The Golden Compass and discussing it. It was what our viewers and people who follow our Goodreads group voted for, so we're going based on your guys' recommendation. Um, I wanted to read it because we all thought it was bad, and, and sometimes it's interesting to look at things as an adult versus I, our childhood, and I didn't like, think this it was is why bad. we were wrong. I've read, I've read all of them. I thought they were good. I thought they were fine. I only I thought they were bad. Do you want to be a wizard? <laughs> I'm still I upset they didn't the vote for that. I didn't like it very much. So we'll see. Anyway. Sorry you have to read something you didn't think was bad, Taylor. Gosh. Yeah. It's a burden on me. Let me let let's be frank. Oh, so this is another book that you liked and Michaela and I all right, what is this dynamic? I'm confused. Yeah, I, I decided to switch to uh away from Taylor as a, yeah. as my best bro, I guess. Mm -hmm. He hasn't spent any amount of time with me. So this is what happens. It's true. I'm not even. And by default, I move up. <laughs> <laughs> when one of us moves down, there's only the other person. There are no other friends. I dance on your bones. You know what? I can say bye to both of you. Carl's coming to visit me this weekend. Yeah. Oh well. Okay, we both lost. <laughs> yeah. All right. We're still. Anyways, but Kaylee needs to go to bed. 
We're still in a video. I really need to go to bed. All right. Uh, so all, all info are, is going to be in the description. We can skip that. Yep, it's already in the description. It's been in the description the whole time. So if you want to find us, go down there. It's 10:50 p.m. and we're all senior citizens and need to go to bed. It's true. So See thanks you. for watching, guys. This has been a weird video. <laughs> See you on Monday. Hopefully, I'm not puking by then. I hope that would so be too. good. Yeah. <clears throat> Bye. Woo!